Joe Franklin's Hollywood Memories. That's me, Joe Franklin, and I've been uh, dealing in nostalgia for about 24 years here in New York TV, and now I'll be sharing it with everybody right here in my private world, in my den. Uh, no frills, no gloss, nothing except my movies, my photographs, my sheet music, my nostalgia, and mostly you and me together, warm and intimate and reminiscing. The uh, subject matter today will be comedy, the so-called golden age of comedy. Great, great comedians, many of them totally gone. They say that Broadway is the longest street with the shortest memory. There's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. But bear in mind, everybody you'll be seeing on this program was once number one. I'll be right back with some of your friends and my friends as we do some old-fashioned comedy following these interesting words. Stay with me. From the archives right now, from the vaults where I keep my treasured, my favorite TV interviews, I would like to remember Milton Berl as uh, the liveliest and brassiest star of TV's so-called brass era. You'll notice during the interview with me, he's uh, mellowed and toned down considerably since that particular era. But let's face it, the same as one more incontestable genius, the fellow we saw before, Charlie Chaplin, Milton Berl also the same as Chaplin, wrote, directed, starred, produced, composed, organized, cast, everything regarding his own vehicles. Milton Berle uh, was somewhat of uh, a phenomenon. And uh, all I can say is that uh, this man deserves a lot of tribute. That night between Monday and Wednesday became known as Burl's Day. And I can think of any other comedian, any other star, as a matter of fact, who appeared simultaneously the same week on the covers of Time and Newsweek. Here's Milton Berle on my show not too long ago reviewing some of the problems from that uh, brass age primitive TV era. Let's watch. Who might have been the first one that ever called you Uncle Milty? Was there one person to whom we can attribute that, uh, that coin? Where did, where did the coining... Uh, right, put that... the camera on me when I speak, please. Right. <laughs> you direct to punch it up faster. Uh, see, I see I'm directing already. Uh, the... Uh, the phrase Uncle Milty, or how it came about, is that what you want to know? Yes, this is an historic interview. This, this, seriously, Milton, this, this interview uh -huh, will, be, will be preserved on, on videotape, shown in colleges, and I'm very serious about that. And these are things that people would, I think, like to know. Well, let's just say that uh, certain times accidents happen. Right. If you plan uh, something like to be planned to be called Uncle Milty, it usually... Uh, possibly wouldn't work out. True. It happened by accident, Joe. And uh, I was, um, I think it was in the third or fourth year of the, se no, third year of the Texco show. And uh, at the beginning of the uh, reigning of the Texco years, when uh, it was new and people used to come over to me on the street, mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts and grandmothers and grandfathers, used to say, look, uh, you're keeping our kids up late at night. You know, you, they watch you from 8 to 9, then we'll get up and go to school the next morning. Can you please try to tell them to please go to sleep? And I said, well, I'm not, uh, not at, uh, I, I can't do it because of the FCC. I actually can't speak to those, those were in those days. You, you couldn't do it. But uh, I'll keep in mind and see what I can do. Well, uh, this third uh, year started, and we... Uh, I think we hired in the first week a new script girl. Now, for the viewers that are watching Joe right now, we do a thing called back timing. When you're doing a, uh, a variety show or whatever, any kind of show, feel you how much time you've got left toward the end of the show. Right. And you've got to get off at a certain time on account of its commercial value. And uh, this girl said, uh, just after we got through with the dress rehearsal, she said... Uh, Oh, we're about, we need four minutes. We need four minutes more. So we'd have to edit and cut out four minutes out of the script. Well, we did that. And uh, when I got on for the show, and it was a live show, Joe, and in those days, uh, you got what you saw, you saw what you got. There was no editing. There was no uh, adding a laugh track. There weren't any applause signs. There weren't any cue cards. 
And there weren't any teleprompters. No such thing as videotape. No, no tape at all. Uh, if, if you made a mistake and you blew it, baby, that was it. It was a kinescope, but that meant a kinescope the, of the show you had already done to be yeah, seen. Yeah, we'll get to that, right. but let me just finish right. what I want to say. Uncle Milty. So, uh, this first show, this third season started, and she said we were four minutes over. Right. Meaning we needed four minutes. <laughs> well, at the end of the show, I was supposed to say good night and go into my theme song of there's just one place for you near me or one place for me near you and as I got to that there was a man under the camera like one of your floor men here that are like walking around right now right. and not standing still uh, he went like this to me I said well that's it ladies and gentlemen good night and I looked down like this and there was a fellow under the camera and he went like this more minutes seven more she gave us a wrong count, the girl. We had seven minutes to go. Well, that's like a lifetime, if you know. That's calamitous. Well, it's especially if you're In this a comic or a comedian and, and uh, you're ready to sign off and you haven't got any more material left in the show that's been planned. So I had to start to ad-lib for seven minutes. And I thought that I was doing great and it was going great. And all of a sudden, I looked down. I said, well, is that it? You know, he went, four more minutes. <laughs> I well, that's, that's very good. No, I was fishing and floundering. Well, uh, I, uh, I, I, well, it's, uh, gee, uh, I, oh, by the way, and the thought came into my mind. I said, by the way, I want to speak to you kids that are watching the show. Right. And I took that shot and I said, I've been li uh, listening to some of your mothers and your daddies and your uncles and aunts. And uh, first thing I'd like to tell you, children, there isn't any more television after 9 o'clock. That's the first thing I said to him. And, uh, and I said, no, I'm just kidding. But you listen to me. You go to bed early right now after the show is over, please, because you've got to get up and go to school. And I didn't want to say, Joe, I didn't want to say, so you listen to Mr. Burrell or listen to Milton. Right. I said, so do me a favor. Listen to your, uh, uh, your Uncle Milton. And I just said it. Well, the show was over. Right. The following day, I went up to Boston for the youth, Catholic Youth Organization yes. to do a benefit. And they gave me uh, an open parade in the street, you know, an open car, and I sat on the top of the car. And I was driving up Boylston Street, and there were two guys dressed like Jerry Rosenberg with the, with the uh, helmets digging. And as I passed them, one of them said, Hi, Uncle Milty. And I went, uh-uh. And I drove a couple of blocks more, and some child on the street said, Hi, Uncle Milty. And that was it. And From one time. <sighs> yeah, I must, but the black guy was terrific. Right. The foreman, under the camera, giving me those signs, you know, you'll know, you never guess who it was. Of course, they all worked in those early days in Texaco, and yes. was one of our great directors called Ralph Nelson. Good man. He did movies, sure. And then Arthur Penn was one of our floor men. Outstanding. So I said to Ralph Nelson when I did Doyle Against the House where I played the dealer. Right. You know, the dramatic, sure. he directed it. I said, he said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no. And he finally said, I was the floor man and they, that gave you the sign about the seven minutes. And I said, small world. But that's the way those things happen, Joe. You see, uh, um, you can't plan them. I was watching a comedian the other night on TV, and he got a big laugh. I, I, I could even give you the routine. He said something about, uh, about uh, somebody asked a nightclub owner for change of a $5 bill, and, and the nightclub owner threatened to make him a partner. And, and, yeah. and, and, all, and, and I looked, and it, it sounded familiar to me, and I looked in a joke book that I bought of yours, marked 1939. It was a 19, the Milton Burrell's 1939 joke book. The exact same joke. So what I'm saying is that they're getting good mileage. Out of your old... Uh, well, we won't go into a comedy symposium now, no, but there's only just, about eight to nine forms.